All right, we're back. I've got my gessoed board here that we're gonna put the armature on, uh, just like we did on the rough drawing. So we'll get going with that right away. We know that we're 20 inches here. So we're gonna find our midpoint, just 10 inches here. 16 on this side, so we're at eight, 10 inches, and eight inches. Okay, now we're gonna do exactly like we did on the rough sketch light lines here so from the corner to the side and that corner to opposite side bottom corner bottom corner to opposite side okay now we're going to join the midpoint up top here same goes here top corner Same thing. Okay, here we go. We will now find our power points, which were, this was on the law of thirds. Right here we can find those easily now because there's the intersecting points. A white line. There too. And just for argument's sake, we will get one the other way here too. So I've got all sorts of stuff to go by here. Okay, there we go. Now we'll get our drawing out and get that transferred onto here. We're gonna again try and get the eye right in this area here. So I'm gonna try and line things up, but we'll uh, grab our carbon paper and move on to that right now. Okay, here's our pencil drawing of our deer. And we want to get, what I determined is to get this eye right on this general area, right in that power point there. I felt that that was going to be the strongest spot for this deer overall. It's kind of my guide. You can see it's everything kind of falls. He's anchored right on that law of thirds here, this focal point, which is the face. I felt like that was gonna be the strongest way of doing this. So I can see my lines here. So I'm gonna use this square here just to kind of figure out where we are here and get that, that eye located right on the corner of that square. That should get us right close to where we wanna be. Okay, make sure that everything looks kinda, he's got that little tilt to his head. I want that to, you, know, you don't wanna end up like you know, crooked or cockeyed, you want to try and get it where you, so everything looks the way you drew it in accordance to your rough sketches and stuff. So I think that's good right there. So I'm just going to hold this down. I'll put a little chunk of tape here. I don't want to overdo this here for the tape. Just kind of just hold it in place. It sticks too hard sometimes. It'll, it can, shouldn't, but it could potentially could peel some of that primer off. I don't want that. Okay, so here's our uh, graphite paper. I've had this for a long time. You can use this over and over and over again, but I got it at an art store. I can't remember where it was, but it's just this uh, artist graphite paper for transferring things like this. So I don't think one sheet's going to be enough here. So Okay, as long as there's some underneath there. Now, we're good to go here. I can start to trace my, my drawing here onto my panel and should transfer on there. So I press hard enough to make sure there's an impression back there. Once we get our deer on, we can start roughing in all the other elements like the trees and stuff, but I'm just going to freehand all that stuff because it doesn't have to be perfect like the deer does. And the more you have this stuff worked out again in the drawing part, the better it's going to go when you're painting it. I mean, all of these things like these elements here, like the nose, the eyes can all be adjusted with your paint, but 
it's always best to work it out. So I'm anxious to get into this one. I do really believe it's going to be a real good painting. Plus, I love painting white tails, so I'm not going to quit till I get it right. So I always try and tell people, it's just paint something that you're brutally excited about. Because you're going to work harder to try and get it right. And I don't come from a family of artists. Never, my whole life it's just been, dad was a mechanic. And I worked in the oil field for a while. as a hunting guide and all sorts of things like that. So there's really, as far as the art thing goes, there isn't a whole lot of artists in our family. Well, there's nanny that I can think of. Maybe some creative people, like guitar players and stuff, but this is all stuff I picked up on my own, and the reason I did is because I just love these animals. Just wanted to communicate it, so I thought, I am going to learn how to do this. It would have helped maybe to have a background in art, so family member or somebody. I, my grandma did a bit of arts and crafts and stuff, and she would paint these little nativity scenes for Christmas and stuff, and I remember the smell of the oil paint when I was just a little kid. It might have stuck with me. It's kind of a, a, the smell of oil paint, linseed oil. This is where that light is hitting that front edge of that haunch there. Kind of want to locate that tail. This really goes pretty quick if you've got everything worked out ahead of time. So. Okay, let's have a look. Hopefully we're transferred underneath. Okay, I see I'm missing a tine there. Which tine? I think it was this one right here. That probably wouldn't have been the end of the world because I would have just drew it in there, but... Yeah, there it is. All right, I think that's good enough. Good to go. I'll put this stuff away and we'll start roughing in the rest of everything here. Okie dokie, we're gonna start um, getting some trees in here, get those located and the rest of the elements to this. And there's just gonna be some basic lines so we know where things are. And then now I'm gonna reinforce force the drawing and I'll show you how that's done. Okay, so I've got my rough drawing out, just using that as a guide. And I see I have a tree put in there. I'm just gonna, it was anchored right to that line, the law of thirds line there. So I'm gonna put that one in. And then the next two bigger trunks, again, I'm keeping them all in this, this, this third of the, of the format here. And then this other one here, right about there. And I had a little bit more time to think about where I wanted this bluff of leaves. I, I Again, I'm going to try and use my line here. I was going to just kind of stuff them up here, but I'm going to kind of run them down along that line that we made. And there'll be little bits and pieces of that. So that's going to kind of look after our bluff of bright yellow leaves that are going to find themselves up in this area. I might kind of throw a shadow in here that's going to kind of bleed off to the corner here. And then thinking a bit further about this, I wanted, obviously, the dark is going to be behind this deer here. So our spruce branches and everything are going to be running up around here. As I'm looking at my rough drawing again, and that little patch of sky was going to be up in here. And we were going to punch some holes of light through that spruce a little bit in here. And then our grass, and low shrubs, rose bushes, and all that stuff are going to run down this way. And again, I love those diagonal lines, so I'm just going to try and keep things always on an angle. So our line for this is going to run down this way. And then I had that little bank of 
willows back here that were going to be in the shadow. So this was all going to be in shadow here. And I wanted to put that in there and then maybe it was going to run down here. So yeah, we're just going to rough these lines out and I think that's looking good. Another little thing I think I'm going to add after thinking about this is I was probably, because we're looking at this area here is creating distance or depth, you know, a coolish kind of color that's going to draw your eye down across. I thought conversely I could come up here, maybe use one of these lines up here to put a couple of just branches that are like coming off the edge of the format here with some nice up close aspen leaves just throw those in there it doesn't have to be a bunch of them but it can be something that isn't quite nice details that'll be a nice little addition to all of this so you'll have some detail in here with these leaves and then it'll just progressively kind of loosen up as you get in the direction of the deer. You can see how the deer's quartering this way and everything's kind of angling up in there and then the light's coming this way. So uh, I think that's uh, one of those little things that I kind of thought of after I was just ruminating on this a little bit. That's gonna add to it. So, okay, so I think we've got our pencil work done. I'm gonna show you how to reinforce this so that when we kill the white and get our first lean layer of paint on it doesn't wipe all of our drawing and this graphite here is pretty fragile so we're going to reinforce all this stuff with some acrylic paint and i'll show you how to do that right now